Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my lecture about uh, lightweight parts. I want to show you the newest technologies and innovative applications. My name is Manuel Wörle. I'm senior sales manager um, for lightweight technologies. Lightweight technologies is more than only weight reduction in the part. It's also about combining new materials, it's about improved properties, and it's about efficient production. Lightweight technologies is mainly brought from the automotive industry. Everybody is talking about carbon dioxide uh, footprint and about electromobility. But we also find it in other industries like um, electronics, like, like blaze and everywhere. Why? It's about cost savings, it's about conserving of resources, and it's about new applications. It's a wide field of, of technologies and I want to introduce three different technologies to you today. It's a physical foaming technology, ProFoam. It's our fiber direct compounding. And finally, I have an example about a multi-material design where we made a technology together with RockTool. In all three technologies, Arborg is an applications consultant and we are your system partner. The procedure in physical foaming in ProFoam um, is as it is shown here. We melt the material and we bring in a blowing agent. The blowing agent is a gas which is during the melting of the material which goes into the material via uh, diffusion and we get a homogeneous solution in front of the screw. This homogeneous solution is injected into the mold because of the pressure drop in the mold, we get a nucleation and a cell growth. And this brings us our integral foam, which we want to have with when we do physical foaming. That means when we do uh, pro foam, when we do physical foaming, we do a part filling of the cavity. That means we inject only 90, 95% and the rest of the cavity filling then is done by the foam in the part. Besides the weight savings, there are a lot more advantages of the physical, of physical foaming. First of all, we have reduction of shrinkage, warpage and sinkholes. And we get a uniform longitudinal and transverse shrinkage. This gives you a better part quality for a lot of parts. The weight savings we talk about for technical parts, it's always dependent on the part and of the mold, of course. But in reality, we can achieve 8 to 12 percent. And another point is the reduction of the viscosity. When the gas is, in the, is melted in the melt, um, we reduce the viscosity of the material. That means the material flows easier and we can realize longer flow paths and we bring less shear into the melt. Because we have no holding pressure and less injection pressure, we can lower the locking force. So we need less clamping force in the foaming process and this um, sometimes requires then a smaller machine for the same product. Because of the lower viscosity and because we have the, the foam pressure inside of the part, we can also very often optimize the part design. That means, for example, if you have uh, um, shrink holes or sink holes, um, you, you have to to get a thicker wall when you do a solid molding and this wall you can reduce when you, when you have a foam process because of the foam pressure inside of the part. And finally, because we have no holding pressure and we inject less material, we also have less heat to bring out of the part. That means we can reduce the cycle time and this makes the, the process efficient. But on the other side, you see it here on the right, we also get a streaky surface. And maybe depending on the material, on the part, the mechanical properties can be reduced. So we always have to look at these two points if we talk about a part and if you want to change from a solid molding to pro foam process. Also the advantages, we can optimize the process to one or two of the advantages, but we never can achieve the same at all, all these advantages with one part. So we have to look what is the goal and then we can optimize the process to that goal. 
The Profum process was developed uh, together with the EKV, EKV in Aachen. And here you see how it works. We have a, a standard cylinder which has additional sealings. So in the front we have a needle type shut-off nozzle. And in the back we have an additional sealing. And where the material comes in, we have our Profum unit. That means the screw area is sealed. And in that screw area, uh, we bring in the blowing agent. Um, we can work with nitrogen, our carbon dioxide, and we work with a pressure up to 50 bar. Because we bring in the blowing agent right with the material at the beginning, we have the complete plasticizing time uh, where the blowing agent goes into the melt. Therefore, we don't need any mixing elements on the screw. We can use a standard three-zone screw. If you look at the, the granulate lock, we have a two-chamber system. So the material comes in from the top and we have the lock chamber. In the lock chamber, we bring the material from atmosphere into our gas pressure of up to 50 bars. Once the pressure is built up, we can we bring the material to the storage chamber. And the storage chamber is directly um, connected to the injection unit and the storage chamber makes sure that the pressure is always at the same level. So we have a constant process. Besides the advantages I just uh, mentioned, we also have advantages in the mechanical um, properties. We can use for Profoam, for the Profoam process, we can use long glass fiber uh, material. You see here uh, uh, from a material from Sabic where they did um, investigations. We used 12.5 millimeter material um, with 20, with 30, and with 30 percent of glass. And we looked at the fiber lengths in the part compared from a solid part to a foam part. And you can see that the fiber length in the foam part is always a little bit higher than in the solid part. This is because of the reduced viscosity and because we use a standard screw. So the, uh, the shear is lower than in the um, solid molding. And because of the longer fibers, um, we have then again better mechanical properties. Here in that case, we looked at the penetration force. And you see here the weight reduction of 0, 20 and 30 percent. And you can see that up to 20 percent weight reduction, we are almost on the same level um, in regards to the penetration force. So you can see we can achieve a weight reduction, but with the longer fibers, we can still have good mechanical properties. And this is a big potential of the Profoam process, the use of long glass fiber material. As an example, I want to show you the, the cloth compartment cover, which we showed at the K-Show. Uh, this part was optimized for physical foaming, for pro, pro foam process. And the wall thickness was reduced from 2.5 millimeters to 1.8 millimeters. With solid molding, it's not possible to make a good quality part with 1.8 millimeters because you would have uh, sinkholes and you would not be able to fill the part completely. With the foaming process, we have the lower viscosity, so we still can fill the part and we don't get sinkholes. So we can make a good quality part with only 1.8 millimeter wall thickness. Therefore, you can see that we can achieve 30 percent weight reduction. 20, 22 percent is out of the design change from 2.5 to 1.8 millimeters, and the remaining 8 percent is because of the foaming process. This shows you if you directly design the part according to the foaming process, you can achieve more weight reduction than if you just take a part and change from solid to pro-foam. And on this part we also showed that a, a high um, surface quality is possible if you use additionally variocerm mold temperature control. So variocerm mold temperature control you inject into a hot mold and then after the injection process you cool the mold down. And then even with the foam process you can achieve a high gloss surface finish. So ProFoam brings you new opportunities. Besides the advantages of a foaming process, ProFoam is ideal for shear sensitive materials and long glass fiber materials. So we can have longer fibers in the part. 
which is positive for your mechanical properties. We also found out with customers that because of the, the low shear, the lower shear in the melt, that we have less emissions in the part. This is very important for the automotive industry. And for you, you have the flexibility um, because you can use with the same cylinder module, you can do a foaming process and a solid molding without changing a screw, without changing the cylinder, because we use the standard screw geometry. And the Proform unit is also flexible to use on several Arborg machines, as long as the machine is equipped with the interface. And for the application uh, people, it is a very simple process. It is only one additional parameter, which is the process gas, the, the, the 50 bars uh, pressure which we have in the cylinder. The second um, is the fiber direct compounding, uh, which I want to show you. With the fiber direct compounding, we bring in the glass fibers directly into the melt. You can see here the cylinder module. The cylinder module is uh, double extended. That means we have an L over D of about 33 compared to 20, what you normally have. And in the first area here, you have an L over D of about 18, where we melt the standard material, unfilled material. And then we have an area where we bring in the glass fibers. And in the front, we have an L over D of about 11, where we mix, homogenize uh, the fibers and the materials. The fibers come in endless from, from a roving, as you can see here. We cut the fibers in a defined length. We can adjust the length from 5.6 up to 33.6 millimeters. And then the cutted fibers are fed with a two screw side feeder directly into the melt. And the amount of the fibers we can adjust in our Celogica control. So you can individually adjust the fiber length and the fiber amount um, to your process. The injection process itself is a standard process. So we work with a standard non-return valve and we have a standard injection process. The advantage is that we bring in the fibers relatively late and we bring in the fibers longer than you are used to when we have a long glass fiber material. The longer fibers in the part, um, we can, what we can achieve is, you see here, uh, so you see the fiber length and you see the rigidity, the strength and the toughness. So the rigidity is very fast um, with a fiber length of one millimeter at 95%. This can be um, optimized with the amount of fibers, not with the fiber length. Where we can optimize uh, the properties is the strength and the toughness. And here you can see that we really can make uh, big improvements in the fiber length longer than the short fiber materials, longer than one millimeter. This is also where long glass fiber material uh, is used. But with the fiber direct uh, process, we have even more potential to improve it even more. The second advantage is the uh, economic advantage. If we look at a long glass fiber material, a PP long glass fiber 30%, you can buy for around 2.65 euro per kilogram. And in the fiber direct compounding process, um, we compound our own material. Therefore, we use a plain PP material, unfilled. Uh, we use the glass fiber roving. And we need a bonding agent, which we bring in as a master batch. If we combine that uh, to a PP uh, LGF30, um, if we calculate the prices, we have a material price of 1 euro 46 per kilogram. That means you have a cost benefit of 1 euro 20 per kilogram. This, are, this is 45% per kilogram what you save. Uh, therefore, uh, the amortization of the system uh, is given very fast. I want to show you a an, um, an part which is already, uh, already in, in process in high volume production. This is a power cable driving housing. This was um, in the past was a PP long glass fiber material. And we changed that with the customer to a long glass fiber, um, uh, to fiber direct compounding process with a fiber length of 11.2 millimeters. And we did the test with the customer. We did trials and tests. And we fulfilled all requirements um, regarding the quality. 
and therefore the customer was able to change from the expensive long glass fiber material to our fiber direct compounding process and this part is already running in serial production. So the advantages of the fiber direct compounding process are the longer fibers in the part. This gives the advantages in the mechanical properties. And we can individually um, adjust the fiber length, the fiber, the amount of fibers, and the material combination. So it's also possible to do it with other materials uh, like a nylon, like a PET or PC ABS. We are open there. We can do trials with different materials. And, and you are able to adjust all these parameters depending on the requirements of your part. So you don't need a lot of materials in your storage. You just um, adjust the, um, the parameters in your process. And it is a cost-effective high volume production possible. The last point is the multi-material design. Um, here I want to show you the IDH technology from, from Rocktool, which we showed on the K-Show and which we show on the uh, JEC World in Paris right now. This is an inductive dual hybrid technology. Uh, the part is a laptop cover where we uh, inserted a composite sheet with carbon fiber, one millimeter thickness, and we injected the, the plastic on the, on the frame where we have a functional integration. And the part, as you can imagine, is a very low weight part with a very high rigidity. And we can also achieve high low gloss surfaces on the composite. So the, the, the focus on the multi-material um, design is to, to combine uh, different materials, different processes to get a multi-material design. So it is possible to, um, to bring the advantages of the material exactly there where we, where we need it, at the point of the part where we need it. So we combine the advantages of the different material, materials. And we do the functional integration of the parts. And of course, what always um, is required is the economical production. And here you can see the production cell of that uh, laptop cover. You see a very, very small footprint cell. You see a vertical machine uh, with a rotary table, with a KUKA 6-axis robot in the front. The KUKA 6-axis robot handles the cold organ organo sheet. The organo sheet is heated up in the mold. So we place it in the mold and then the mold is heated up uh, via induct uh, is inductive heated up. And we also bring a heater from the top with the KUKA robot. So we heat it up from both sides. From, from both sides. And once we reach the temperature, we rotate the turntable and we do the uh, molding on the station one, uh, where we do the functional integration. The cell runs with a cycle time of about uh, 60 seconds and there are no up or, downstream, up or downstream processes necessary. Everything is integrated in, in the mold um, on the machine. So it is a very effective uh, production cell. So you can see uh, lightweight uh, processes are innovative processes for innovative products. Um, it is a very wide range of applications possible, of, of processes possible. It's possible to combine the processes, the materials. It is just necessary that you right at the beginning when you design a part, when you design the mold, that you already have in mind what process, what technology you want to use, that you can um, design the part, design the mold according to that technology. And this is where we, where Arbor can help you uh, we can bring in the right partners um, and we can get together with you the most uh, benefits out of the part optimization. Thanks a lot for your attention.